How's it going everybody? Uh, welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to go through a very interesting topic and one that gets asked a lot and that is how to make money from this game of Opal that we all love so much because it's it's a lot of fun but a lot of people do want to make money or at least not lose money. So I'm going to go through a few options. You can see here I've made a little bit of a tier list. So there's six options here. We'll go through them, we'll rank them and I'll give you my thoughts of course, I don't do a lot of these things, like I'm not a miner, so I've talked to a lot of miners to get some info and a bit of insight, so we'll go through that as well. Hopefully, this will give you a good idea of what you can expect, because I don't want people to have unrealistic expectations, and I tend to be fully honest with all of this stuff, so we'll even go through some of my kind of numbers and I can give you a bit of insight into what I do as well. Let's get into it. So let's start at stage one of the life of an opal and we'll go with the mining section. So a little truck here. Mining is brutal. Like you can get anywhere from being in this single cash sign category and you can also hit the jackpot. This is a full range thing, but most of the time, realistically, you can expect to kind of sit around the three cash somewhere in the middle there. I would like for miners to earn a lot more money, but it's just it's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. You pick a bad patch of dirt and it just doesn't yield what you want. Other people, other people will just hit gold straight away. So it's it's very different. I've talked to miners that are really successful. I've talked to miners that are terribly unsuccessful and just really unlucky too. If you're cursed and your equipment keeps breaking down, there's nothing you can do. If, if you can find a lot of opal, that's good. That'll recover all of that cost. But if you don't, you're just battling uphill constantly. And I always hope for the miners to be all up in this category, but that's a bit unrealistic. It is a hell of a commitment to begin with. And sometimes it just does not pay off for a while. Some people will have entire seasons where it's just not that great because you don't want to be out there all year round. Typically, everyone will go in quick little bursts here and there, a couple months straight kind of thing when it's not too hot and not too cold. But yeah, it's, it's a brutal game, so for now I'm just going to keep that somewhere there in the middle. Number two, I've got this massive pile of opal here. So this is to signify people that are reselling opal. So they might be getting it direct from the miner and then divvying it up into smaller parcels and then dividing it from there. This actually, I think, tends to make more than what the miners make. You can set your prices when you're buying this bulk quantity of opal and then you can set your price that you want to sell it at. Sure, you can do auctions and stuff as well, but Really, you can just set these set these defined numbers. You can keep track of everything so much easier. And I know a lot of people that are making incredible cash. So this is somewhere up in these two. I think of all the people in the Opal game, the resellers are the ones that have the most defined and kind of not simple. It's a lot of hard work, but it is kind of a really, a really clear kind of strategy you're going for. You're buying bulk Opal, you're divvying it up, you're selling it on, grading it all out. All of that, I think, is probably the most reliable. Maybe reliable is the right word to put it in. Of all the people that I know that are earning proper money from Opal, the ones that are performing the best tend to be people that are reselling Opal direct from miners. So they take a trip out, they stock up, and they sell that off when that's all gone. They go back out, they stock up again, they get good connections with miners, they get great prices, and... A lot of them do pass the savings on to people like us, but they are, they're making a fair bit of cash. So yeah, if you do it correctly, you're going to be up here somewhere. If you do it dishonestly and stuff, you you might be up here for a very short period of time, but reputation will absolutely kill or make a person. And really in the long run, it's just a terrible way to go. So I'm still going to put it up here. I think it is probably the most reliable way to make money. If I was committed to just making money from Opal, that is probably what I'd do. I'd take trips out, just stock up, and then sell it online. But instead, I just hoard whatever I buy like a dragon, so terrible choice. Now, the next step in this chain is probably this one just here. So this is a cut little calibrated stone. Now, cut calibrated stones and carvings like I do, completely different. Carvings, you will most likely make far less money just because it's so much harder to get a sale. But this is just a signifier going from this rough and then cutting it up, cutting it up, polishing it up, trying to move it on. This is, it's tough. If you're not in the top bracket of professional cutters, you are going to struggle as a hobbyist, honestly, to get stones from rough and then polish them up and sell them for a big markup or a profit. It's really hard because you're just going to have to sell at a more realistic price. 
I would say this is honestly, in terms of being a beginner kind of, well, not a beginner, in terms of being more of a casual kind of cutter instead of professional, you're going to make very little. A lot of us, though, are happy just to make back our money. So if that's the case, this is perfectly fine. It doesn't really matter. If you're not here to make money, don't worry about it. But if you're looking at like a Black Opal Direct where they're pumping out massive, high quality, top gem stones, that's when you can go up here. So similar to mining, you can fit a full range. If you take it really seriously and go full pro and do it full time, get great contacts, get great rough, cut great stones, sure, you can make a lot of money. But for the average person, I would say it's somewhere down in one of these lower categories. The majority are probably in the bottom category where you're just happy to make back what you've what you've spent on the rough. That's kind of where I sit a lot of the time. But maybe we'll just chuck it. We'll chuck it one from the bottom because there's there's a category that's going to be rock bottom that you'll see very soon. So the next step up is this one. So that's going from a cut stone to a piece of jewelry. This also applies for going from a rough stone all the way through to a piece of jewelry. I think the two are a little bit different. I think if you can go from rough to finished gem to jewelry, you're really maxing it out. I think in terms of talking to people that do this professionally and file their taxes and everything. This is also up here. This this is where you can get the markups. If you can do some really nice, really nice stones and get really nice settings, create your own custom settings. If you haven't seen Phil at the Opal Mills, that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Like if you can make your, your own jewelry, your own stones, I mean, he literally can dig them out of the ground and take them all the way to that end. So he's uh, incredibly skilled and shows that off on his channel a lot. But if you can do this, you can make decent money and you don't have to. So this can also go right down to the bottom. If you don't want to, you're not pressured into doing anything. You can lower it down in these categories. For example, if I just switch over to my camera, so like you can get pre-made settings and then set your own inlay opal just like this. This is from Kev as a thank you for a stone that I cut for him a while back. And this has got chips from all different, all different fields of opal, which is incredibly cool. And you're not needing top grade gems to be able to make stuff like this. You can also do basic claw settings and stuff. It's, it's really up to you. You can go really casual or you can go full on and bezel set a $10,000 stone and make it into a $20,000 ring. Like you've got the full range, but as a kind of hobbyist, you can get away with doing stuff like this and you'll still make a, you'll still make a couple bucks. So it's definitely worth considering. I might step this down just one category just because it takes so much effort. I think it's just maybe one step behind the reselling of Opal Rough. I've got another one here. This is just a shot of a Bellum Knight that I've cut a long time ago. And this is just to denote collecting. So collecting or investing in Opal. This can actually, if you play it well and you go for the long run, you can easily start making making serious money from this. If you've got good contacts, you've got good supply, you can definitely pick up some really interesting stones that have a lot of demand and you can just sit on them. You could easily just sit on them. Like this one I'll sit on probably forever because it's the banner logo for my uh, YouTube channel, but this can definitely make you money. Like investing in anything, as long as you play it right, you go for the long game, you will make money. So I'm also going to put something like this up here. Now the last category, you can see my little uh, YouTube logo here. So if you want to do some kind of online, I don't know, something stupid like online Opal Influencer or something, you can uh, guarantee that you're going to be probably rock bottom. This is the least reliable way to make money. Even now, I mean, people say my channel's gotten huge, but it's it's tiny. And when it comes to YouTube, it's getting harder and harder every day to make anything from it. Don't rely on it. This is not a job. This is pure casual. You could spring a business off the side of this. So to give an example, the YouTube channel will make oh, 100, 200 bucks. This is Australian dollars, so 10 to 20 cents. American that's all this will get through YouTube ads kind of thing it, it makes so little and it gets less and less every couple of months when YouTube changes policies and the likes so they're constantly taking a bigger slice of it which is not a problem just enjoy what you're doing if you are going to do the videos thing do it feel free to reach out I'll give you all the advice I can possibly give but just definitely don't expect this to be a business or making money from it 
Now, building the website and selling tools and stuff that I'm doing at the moment and developing products and then making them cheaper for everybody, that is actually, surprisingly, easily outweighing what YouTube is paying me. So in that case, if you can make a business from the YouTube channel and just treat the YouTube channel more like publicity or something, then yeah, sure, maybe it'll creep up a notch. And to be honest, I could be charging more for a lot of the stuff that I'm selling, but the only reason I'm selling it is to save people money. So it's not, it's not a goal to climb up to the top here and just start selling selling at uh, ridiculous prices because that's the one thing I'm trying to uh, prevent from happening. So ideally the competition lowers their prices and then everything's fine. I don't actually have to do it myself anymore, but it is, it is a bit of fun and I'm getting to talk to a lot more people as well. So I've got to be honest and I've got to put it rock bottom. Like in terms of YouTube solely, it's, uh, it might be lower than rock bottom. It might be unranked, but if you can do something from it, maybe as a launching pad or something who knows maybe you can be really successful and you can climb up i mean black opal direct was probably down here at some point actually no probably not because they were always they were generations into the opal game and were probably always up here in the top tier but yeah roy's rocks we're bottom tiering that we are miners are killing it oh, casual cutters are killing it roy's rocks is at the bottom and yeah, that's honestly how I feel about it. And I'm not upset. I'm not upset about it at all. Not angry at all. It's just the way it is. I've got a full-time job outside of Opal. I don't care. The I just like talking with you guys and sharing stuff and just making the community a better place if at all possible. So if I'm ranked at the bottom of the tier, I I I'm fine with that. So I've given my I've given my thoughts on it. There you go. Quick summary. If you're going to resell Opal, buy in bulk, sell it online, little lots, you'll probably make a consistent amount of money and do it pretty well if you're committed to it. Jury making, collecting, also great, great ways to do it. If you play you play your cards right on the investing side of things, it might even creep into the top tier. Some Opal is in huge demand and having seen the prices over the last 10 years, it's, it's definitely outweighing inflation. So you will make money from that. Jury making takes a lot of skill, but... If you can get it done and you can do it in a pro, semi-pro kind of level instead of just a casual kind of level, yeah, you can easily make money mining, you're flipping coins, you're gambling away, you've got to be committed to it, you've got to love doing it. All the miners I talk to always love doing it, or even if they hate it, they still love to hate it. So you've got to be fully committed into that one to make any money at all, let alone just make huge, huge armfuls of cash cutting rough to rubbed to polished opal it's it's a it's a rough one if you can if you can do it well if you can commit to it again it can climb up but if we're just doing it casually and stuff don't expect to make serious cash at best you're just going to recover your cash and for a lot of us that's good enough so who cares my exact same attitude towards the youtube side of things you might make nothing. You might actually just make absolutely nothing. They're making it harder to become paid by YouTube, so it takes a you got to leap a lot of hurdles. And even when you've leapt those got over those hurdles, you know what? They still might give you nothing. So it's it's just the love of the game. Once you get down towards this end, we're kind of talking casual. Even with the mining, you can get some really casual miners. Maybe you'll just go out and help someone you know that's mining. In which case, I don't know, they might kick you a few stones or give you a bit of cash for your time. But apart from that, you might be way down here as well. It's really about commitment. Any of these can make the top tier. But in terms of reliability and stuff, I've ranked them like this. And I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with those rankings. So if you're not, if you're not happy with those rankings, feel free to leave them in the comments and let me know. And yeah, I'm happy to discuss this with anyone. And if anyone needs help with any kind of info, I've talked to so many people over the last couple of years running this channel. So all of this has a lot of information behind it that I haven't shared in whatever this 10 minute video is gonna be. So feel free to reach out. I'm always, I'm always at the end of an email or a Facebook messenger or something like that. Or jump on the website and let me know. But yeah, on that note, I'll call it quits. Get this one up and I'll see you in the next video.